Hello and uh, welcome to the sports battle. Uh, <laughs> Brent was meant to start it, actually take over and I just jumped into it because I'm, I'm absolutely busted. It's a Champions League review. Um, one I was a wee bit nervous about. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't the spectacle that it had been built up to be. All in this final, the, the drama of the quarters and the semis, um, everything that happened uh, in the league. Um, but did that matter to you? No, not, not at all. But it, it, like this season, Champions League's probably been the best, would you say? Like, so it was all building up. Yeah, that's what I mean. you say, like, to be potentially the greatest final and, or one of the greatest finals of all time and just be an absolute showcase, especially for all the neutrals. And it wasn't. And I think what happened was Liverpool, and we'll talk about whether it was a penalty or not, got the penalty, got the first goal within a minute, and it just completely changed the whole outlook in the game. Yeah. I, I said, like, how about Salah and Van Dijk, I think it was Gomez and Robertson had all said that we don't need to go gun home games because we know we can win games 1 0. Mm. So when Liverpool took the lead, they sort of just went, right, well, let's just see what Spurs can do now. I think it was a penalty? Yeah, absolutely, it was. Um, I think, yes, I, I, I can understand what Sissoko is saying with the, the point. You know, he's just pointing. It's, he's not trying to put his hand out to block the ball. It's not intentional. But it's still a handball. Like, uh, there's no other way around it. That stopped the ball getting to where Mane wanted it to go. It deflects the whole movement on the ball. Yeah. Like, it takes it away. It takes it in a different direction. He's very, very unlucky. Yeah. Um, and it hits his chest, there's sort of armpit first, and then goes on to his arm, but it, it does hit strike his arm, it is handball, and look, it, it does look harsh, and it is probably harsh on them that this happened, because it was so, such a tight call, but I'm not going to argue against it, like I, was, <laughs> I was happy enough. If, if Spurs fans thought it happened Van Dijk or Matic, they'd have been absolutely screaming for that penalty. Oh, yeah. um, just so happened that it, it was an absolute momentum killer for Spurs because it happened so quickly after two minutes they were already 1-0 down yeah. and going into the game they weren't the favourites anyway and we know we know how much Liverpool's defence has improved this season it probably worked out so well for Liverpool because they were up to defend the lead and they got it so early and then they just did that yeah. Did you expect more from Spurs even after Liverpool scored? Um. Okay, I thought I thought they would definitely create um, a wee bit better, more better opportunities. But I, I have a lot of faith and confidence in this Liverpool defence. Mm -hmm. I know everyone talks about the the front three and even when the midfield play, like with Gino and Aldo against Barcelona, and when Henderson has a brilliant, had brilliant games in midfield and Fabinho, Milner, they all get these mentions and it's brilliant all things going forward. But this defence is just ridiculous at times. Yeah. I think it's not the twenty, it was twenty sixth or something clean sheet this season. Uh, Spurs have lost 20 games but have 58 games this yeah. season so you can you know I, not that I didn't expect Spurs um, to do much better I just thought they were, were a better team so I kind of wasn't hoping that was going to happen do, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of thought Liverpool would just shut them out The season has has been long for both those teams uh, um, but I thought Spurs looked the Spurs I, I, I've been saying this since about six weeks before the Premier League ended um, that Spurs have looked tired yeah. for about two or three months now and it's bound to be because of their squad depth and we were talking about Pochettino how well he's done and it is true to get this Spurs side to a Champions League oh, final yeah. but do you think they needed more in their squad? Oh massively like oh, 100% like, don't get me wrong Laurent and Lucas more have had a mass of impact in certain games this season that's brilliant, but there's still not that strength and depth there. Like that's only one or two of the subs coming on that have had humongous Im impact, and it's been one off or two off. You know what I mean? It's, when they made their subs last night and Mora came on, he didn't do anything. He was w wasteful for them, and there was no none of that killer instinct, and they were just relying on him sort of. A, yeah. a, 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 as well, like the Harry Kane decision. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. What did you think of leaving Mora out? Because. He did genuinely get them through to the final on his own. And he must be thinking, I scored a hat-trick in the Champions League semi-final and I'm not starting the final. What is going on here? I, I, I agree with playing Harry Kane. Yeah. He's the best striker 
maybe their best player. He's one of the best number nines in the world. He is, he's an elite football player. But it's and really not the fine the place for Exactly. Him. The other one would have been Deli Alley. Yeah. And he, last night Deli Alley was anonymous. Yeah. And he hasn't been the player that he was two seasons ago. That would have been the player I'm to look at. I have Lucas Moore on with Son and, and Kane. Something different in midfield in with Ericsson and Suzuko because both midfields were really struggling. And there was an opportunity there, I think, for one of those midfields last night. And when they look back on it, they actually, like the Spurs, because they lost it, they're going to look back on it and say, we had opportunities there that we could have really took control of that game because Liverpool weren't at it. There's only really that Liverpool's back four that actually looked quite solid. Yeah. And the goalkeeper. I want to talk about Virgil van Dijk. Oof, don't be that. Man of match performance in the final. Him or I'll, I'll give it to Alisson myself. But I think he got the official man on last, didn't he? Uh, I think he got that one. I think, yeah. I think Liverpool fans voted for oh, yeah. uh, Alisson. Well, great performance anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, nobody has dribbled past him all season. No. Still people don't read him. None out of 64 attempts, I think. Or so. Can he be the best player in the world? Can he, can he win the Ballon d'Or is really what I'm asking you? Um, yeah. <laughs> like, the Ballon d'Or is judged... Well, up until Modric winning it, and Modric got it because he won the European Cup, Champions League. Brendan hates me calling the European Cup, that's what I always say. Um, and then he almost guided Croatia to a World Cup, like Croatia. You know, a tiny nation, but an unbelievable football nation. Um, and Virgil van Dijk could end up winning the Champions League now. Liverpool got 97 points. He's that record, nobody gone past him. Liverpool have kept, was it, 26, 28 clean sheets. Um... Holland are in the U- U- UEFA Nations League. If he wins that, I mean, there's an it, argument. There's, there's, there's a small Argentinian, Argentinian, Argentinian yeah. that could win the Copa America. Yeah, and could have an unbelievable Copa America, and then it'll be between those two. I think it's between those two. Yeah. Do you think he needs? Do you think? <coughs> first of all, do you think Van Dijk needs to go and win the Nations League, and do you think Messi needs to win the Copa America for for him to? Sorry, for him to uh, sort of put his stamp on the Ballon d'Or because right up until Van Dijk won the Ballon d'Or, or sorry, won the Champions League, it, it was Messi nailed on for this season. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It was definitely clear. He was the favorite. Like I don't know if he was nailed on because of the way Barcelona tailed off and they, they lost a couple of Real Fame as well. Mm. Um, he's had such a brilliant season again as always, Lionel Messi. But I think Messi needs to win the Cup America. More than Van Dijk needs to win the Nations League. It need to be you that are watching now or listening to the podcast to give us your views on it. Like, um, what do you think? It's a tough one. It, it really Who would you vote by now? First names in your head. For Ballon d'Or? Yeah. I probably would give it to Van Dijk. Oh. I probably would. Um, because certainly... You is know, he the best defender in the world? Yes, he is. Yeah. He is. I mean... I don't. I can't see another argument. Um, certainly that you know this season um, with what Liverpool have done, um, and, and I think when the trophy was so important, like I know you said it wasn't really, but I just think teams and players <coughs> when they're talked about in the future, you know, it comes down to what they win as well. These players want to look back at and say yes, you know. That was a great time in my career, but I want to challenge the league out of it. Yeah. And I want to, you know, whatever they go on to win, now this group of players, because I don't think that's them done, do you? No, uh, it, really, it, it really isn't. Like. The last team to win three Premier Leagues in a row was Manchester United, mm. um, 07, 08, 09, or something like that. Mm. And that's going to be very, very, City very tough this season to even retain it. I, can you see them winning it a third time? No, I see us winning it. Whereas this team, it does feel like there's something there. They're still quite young. It's daft, like, and I, I do think, and you're an opposing fan, and you feel it, so it must, oh, yeah, yeah. there's something there. I just next year, I want us to just not win the league. Though I want, I want a dynasty built. At Liverpool, I want us to be a team where everyone goes, do you remember that Liverpool team from 19, 20 and 21 that just blew everyone to bits? Yeah. You want that, like? What was your initial feeling when you knew, probably a Rigi school, when a Rigi school went in, you knew you'd won it, I'm, I'm sure. Just complete relief. Relief, yeah. Uh, just sheer, and I think it, 
uh, showing all the players and staff and fans that were there last night that have their videos and all up from certain different podcasts and stuff. I think it just shows just everyone's this feeling of just sheer relief. Relief like, and then joy. And then joy, like you can see Jordan Cock crying his eyes out with Jordan Henderson, what Jordan Henderson been through with his dad. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And you hear stories with James Milner, um, talking the lads through dressing rooms and stuff and then going to see an ex commentator's children who was really sick when he was a baby constantly looking after it was a real thing about this Liverpool team you just love them all and you, you didn't want them to be seen as small sound house like Benfica who just can't seem to win something do you know what I mean they just you, you didn't want this team to remember that as the, the nearly the also runs the, the nearly you know the team that nearly won something you don't want to be that team like right. And as much as I said it, and I, and I like I said yesterday, I was like, we don't win something on our club without a brilliant time, but then when you win it, you're all like, well, shut your mouth. Yeah. It's been crying all day. Like, it's been two pure tears of joy. And I spoke to my dad last night after the match. So it was crying her eyes out for the first two minutes. Not an, an ounce of, I couldn't tell you what he told me or what I said to him. Well, that's what, you know, that's what it means to people. Uh, that's why football is so good. Like, and, and, it's the one. And people follow it so much all yeah. over the world. When you're the retaining champions, you know, people want to beat you. Um, and when you've got such a good reputation, teams raise their game for you. You know, that extra 5-10%. Um, you'll get it in the Premier League and, and you'll get it in um, in the Champions League as well next season. Where or how do you look for the strength? Uh, keeping everyone for a start. Do you think they will? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they'll lose anyone. They'll lose maybe like fringe players. And you just have to add to that. I don't think you're going to need to make any massive major signings. Um, maybe someone at right back. You know, things like that there. We've enough in midfield if we're going to keep everyone. Obviously, Chamberlain will be back. But yeah, that's what's Naby Kaitis has a season behind them. Fabinho's nailed his position. Jordan Henderson, Gina Wijnaldum. That's a lot of competition. You know, there is a lot of competition in there. And we've already been linked with a few players and, and some midfield players. So... Mignolet could move on, so it could be a case of getting an experienced goalkeeper in that, that doesn't mind sitting on the bench. Yeah. Apart from that there, I, I don't know, like... There's a word though when you're wrestling that all on Alisson last night. Don had an unreal shot last night, and Alisson made it look like it was a training session. He got down and he's all like, I'm just going to put this out here, do you mind so? Do you know what I mean? And I was like... He's ridiculous. Like he's so cool. Then Mora gets a shot in front of the goal. And it wasn't a well hit shot, but also just sort of falls down. He's all like, "No, not today, Lucas." He makes things look so easy at times. Most people, what I was thinking, is such a vast difference from last year. It is. It's the difference. Yeah. We won that last night um, because our goalkeeper was just so calm and just so like, "Don't worry about it." And it's picking your moments, isn't it? In a in a big. Final like that where um, obviously Karius went to catch that one last year and spilled it. Um, but Alison tipped, you know, tipped the ball wide or tipped it over just to give the team a couple of minutes breathing space. Like it's those wee things that make the difference. You know, you got Peter Cech. Yeah. And he was a man, just, he just made Chelsea an absolute force. Yeah. Like that's what I'm talking This Liverpool defence now, like that Chelsea defence. That Chelsea defence were ridiculous under Mourinho. Uh, 05 and 06 and this Liverpool team is the closest I've seen to being like that mm. defensively defensively like, uh, they're so rock solid they're so the wing backs are so brilliant Yeah. and then you have a big mad centre half it's just like he just decides games sometimes there's a, big, there's a big summer ahead in the Premier League I think I think there's going to be a lot of change there is and the top two might be the ones that do the least bit of business yeah because they don't need to because mm. of the gap um, and it's precisely because of that gap that everyone underneath Needs to try and bridge it. Um, Chelsea may be forced not to because of the transfer ban. They may have to bring in some of their own players. Manager looks like it's going to change at the minute at Chelsea. Arsenal certainly need to sign some players. And they need to sign some quality very soon. United, we know that there's bound to be an overhaul. And Spurs are going to lose some players. So they're going to have to sign some in return. Yeah, they need to do something with that new stadium. Yeah. It, it needs... Good players, big players, and it needs them to be back challenging and staying where they are. Yeah. 
Um, listen, this isn't the obviously with football for us because the Women's World Cup starts on Friday, the Nation League's on Thursday, and the Cup of America starts soon. Plus, we can now just chat about the transfer window, so there will be a weekly video. Everyone needs to like, <laughs> share, subscribe, um, turn on notifications on YouTube. Uh, the sports, but just search the sports bab and it'll come up. We green logo. Um, it'll be on all our social media: Twitter at the sports babble, Facebook at the sports babble, and Instagram at the sports babble. You know the crack now. Liverpool, champions of Europe. Chelsea also won the Europa League. We texted each other and we said we'll do the double this year. Yeah. Uh, when both teams were in their finals, and we're both very happy men. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, uh, Jake and Johnny. We usually get your chance. And we'll see you again next week. Good luck.